this is Cody from Liquid Laboratory Studio. Today we're going to be showing you how to repair the brand new DJI Mavic Pro drone. As you can tell, this one has a broken left rear leg. Uh, there's a crack in it and it also the metal bracket where the screw mounts is broken. So it's unsafe to fly, we need to replace it with a brand new one. And this also will show you how to replace this right rear leg. It's the same process. And for all the other models, this also works for the Platinum version, the Mavic Pro Platinum the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 2 Zoom and maybe even the Spark but it's going to be the same process for all those it's the same body frame so this will help everyone out um, most importantly we're going to inventory the tools first thing you're going to need is a 1.5 millimeter uh, hex head bit uh, I prefer mine on like a screwdriver because you're going to be doing a lot of twisting to take the screws off then you need various bits for that on the small size and a small set of um, screwdrivers I have to help out. There's going to be Phillips in there and regulars and a few prime items. Then you'll need the soldering gun or soldering iron. And of course the solder. And the flux to put on the wires to help the solder bond. And then the liquid tape. We're going to put this over the connections that we make. And also we'll use it on the frame to glue the wires back down. And then next you'll need a pair of wire cutters. Um, you'll cut the wires with these and you'll also use them for prying and stripping the wires. And most important replacement part. We have the brand new part here. It just came in the mail. So let's go ahead and open this up. And there it is. So here is a brand new motor arm leg, rear left, and it will actually go in just like this. So we're going to get to opening that up, and please show us some love, like, and subscribe. Thank you. Before we get started, let's go over our setup. We need the 1.5 millimeter hex head, and you can see it's really tiny. And the screwdriver bit, lock that in place. And there's various like Phillips, Regulars, Torx, so we got like a, a good set here. But actually I prefer these, these are even smaller and more sturdy. We'll be using them, um, you know, the actual Phillips and, and we'll use a regular to actually pry off one of the components you'll see in a second. Then the soldering gun or iron, the flux to make the wires bond, and of course solder, we're going to use this size. We're going to try to actually keep as much of the original solder on so we don't have to strip it off and then liquid tape to go over our new connections and the wire and these wire cutters. So we'll be using the cutters, the strippers to strip the wires and then we'll use the actual pliers to pull off the old ones. So the new part, as you can tell it's you know brand new and it's got the white ring on it and it lines up. So this is the right one. The other side has the dark ring. So as you can tell the opposites to diagonals have white rings. So when you buy the part make sure you match that up too. And then these ones have the dark rings. So, and of course you need the broken drone. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is ground yourself. I'm using a surgery protector, it's off, and touching the crown port of it for the studio wiring ground. Next, we're going to take the 1.5 millimeter hex head and start removing the screws. We got two, four, six on this side. That's magnetized, but be careful, there are two compasses in this drone. Almost done here. Final screw. Then we're going to need to do is flip the drone. So when we flip the drone, we're going to take these two, and then we'll get these two. Get 
careful these sometimes uh, they're a little hard to get out you need to pry them with a flat Phillips head and these two screws are slightly different so we'll remember that off to the side and one more here same thing okay so we're gonna pop these covers off the best method I see is you get in here rotate it create an opening and use a Phillips head or any head to pop cover one off and same thing in reverse going to give it a bend here And then you got cover two. Now it's going to give us access to these next screws, which are the same size as most of the ones on the airframe. There we go. Now that we have those off, you can start from the back, just to kind of pry it off. And we'll slowly work your way around. And here's a good way we can use the flathead, kind of softly, gently, kind of pry. Pry here with the regular, there we go. front there you don't want to pry too hard but it just rock it off okay and uh, the compass popped itself off but sometimes you'll need to get in underneath to remove the compass this is the second compass I'm gonna set this off now we have exposed ourselves to the inside of the drone we're gonna take out these three connections here remove this liquid now and we're gonna remove it on the side and replace this left rear motor. So before I touch any of these components, I want to touch some of the, the known grounds. I'll take our ground here, still off, touch it, and this is a known ground. You can tell by the, the circle on it. Known grounds, known grounds, and at this point anything. So now I'm grounded, the aircraft's grounded and bonded, and we're good to go. So now we're going to remove this leg. And to get to it, we're going to have to switch out our bit to a Phillips. And this one that's particularly working is a 1.5 millimeter again, Phillips head. You can tell by the size. And take this screw off and these screws will be different so you won't need to mark them or anything it's gonna be quite simple just a remove and replace process and one next to it Sometimes these wires get in the way, so I'm just gotta work with it. We have those off. So next screw we have to remove is back here. Same thing with the 1.5 millimeter hex head. And this screw is also smaller than most. Remember that. Okay, so last thing left, we've removed these two, the Phillips head ones, and this one here. There's a pressure fitting here. So you can take a regular head and pry it up. Just gonna pry it and rock it until it just frees itself up. Okay. Now that we got to this point, we're gonna go ahead and break away some of this liquid nail. And also the liquid nail in here. Just gonna 
break it away softly. Grab a part that's not touching the circuit board. You don't want to touch any of these components if at all possible. Okay, so here's where the wire cutters come into play. I'm going to take the wire cutters and I'm going to cut all three of these because they're gone. Something to remember is these are color coded. Okay, so we have gray, white, and black. We're going to have to copy the same color coding. See, gray, white, and black. We go to put the next set in. So now I'm going to go ahead and clear away some of the tape. We'll use the flathead for that. Just kind of a quick scrape job. Okay, just be very careful not to scratch any of the components or the circuit board. this away. And it's using this liquid tape as an anchor so we're gonna replace it but considering we'll also be able to use it on top of our soldered connections. So be careful and it just kind of works its way off. go. Now most of that's off. We'll come in through here. We can pull any of this out. We we'll use the plier end to finish off the job. You can also use needle nose for this, but this also works too. Okay. This one, we're going to use a soldering gun and the pliers to loosen up the connection. I'm going to take the old wire, put a little bit of tension on it, use the soldering gun to kind of heat. Okay, so one of the wires are off. The next one, they seem to respond better to the back end of the gun. It just depends on how clean are the element. There we go. Just gets a little more hot. Next wire's gone. I'm gonna have to start this one beating. There it goes. Sometimes it helps just to start it first. Okay, now we've removed our wires. It leaves a little more of that liquid tape. Go back to our Phillips head. Just gonna pry it a little bit more off. This may end up kind of a messy job because these old connections are a little bit difficult to get to open up. Uh, maybe a new soldering tip could help out really well. Just gonna get enough of this off without scratching the circuit board. Just get it out of the way. Put a new connection will bond back on. Same thing here. All the parts. So that's there. We'll clean it off. So now, just gonna kind of clean the components off from the recycle in the garbage bin. Okay. So we're ready to assemble the rear left arm now. Uh, these connections aren't quite big enough, so they're gonna actually have to be stripped down a little bit. Um, it's actually smaller than the point eight. Get started. There we go. It's beautiful. So we're going to take the new rear left leg, and as you can recall, these are color coded. It goes gray, white, black. So it'll be just like this. So we're going to start with this, and we'll dip all these in the flux over here. Just give them a little bit of flux. Help them from oxidizing as they get heated. And I'll put a little bit of flux on these connections. And see if we can read how much of the old solder we can use. The less we heat this, the better, because it is a circuit board. So I'll start heating the soldering. 
gun. What seems to be working the best is start a soldering pole on top. Make the connection, heat up the previous solder, bond it to the new solder and the new wire. So wait, just a tad more. This one out. There we go. Now you want to let these set for just a second. Now that we've let it set for a while, we're going to apply the liquid tape. And this time, kind of gingerly just apply it mainly to our areas that we can cross over and hit them all. As long as all the new connections are covered, we'll be good. Okay, now that's there. I'm gonna follow down the old pattern. Clicks back in. Let's go ahead and set this leg into place. the pressure fit right here okay now it's locked in and same thing as the other side just gonna copy it Pull it up around the screw post all the way down into the groove. Okay. As the top part's drying, there we can apply some to the previous areas which may have held it in. Just gonna keep it inside. And another dab right about here. That should just about lock it into place. One more. Right here. You want to have a tissue handy, just going to wipe some of this excess off. Okay. We're going to move on to the reassembling part. Now, for the reassembly process, we need to add the two screws. So these will be the Phillips ones here. Set aside the small ones while we're at. Take our Phillips head bit. This is a 1.5 millimeter Phillips head, or one and a half. Pull these wires up a little bit just to get under there. Now, before you tighten the screws on, you just want to get them both in the holes to make sure they're lined up. So I get the second one close, and then ready to finish this one off. So go ahead and tighten this, but don't crank it down. Just slight, firm. It is composite plastic. So now we'll take the different screw, which is the, the fatter one, put it back. And there's a little bit of sitting to do. Right about there. You can see the screws put in. It's pretty firm, just like the other side. Let's go ahead and put the casing back on. Uh, the casing's kind of tricky. You have these clips here, and it has to pop in all around here. And then you'll finally have to put the compass in. Sometimes the easiest way to put the cover on 
because we have these hooks up here and these will all clamp down and the compass. Uh, it's to start with the compass but you have to be very careful because it will want to remove itself. So now it's seated in place. So what I'm going to do is lay it flat but give it a slight bow. Get it to hook in the front side. Uh, the front side set. I can go here. I just want to make sure it's set properly so I'll push it down a little further with the flat regular screwdriver. That was good. I work our way around the aircraft. We want to get everything to set into place. So we'll go ahead and put these six screws back in. Just want to just start them. I don't want to tighten it down yet until you have them all in place. Kind of work your way back in a pattern like this. With this last screw, just tighten it down, just smooth, and go in a circular pattern. You don't want to like crank on these, but you do want them firm so it sets well. And if the seam's not lining up, there may be one of the clips not put into place or you have something blocking it so make sure before you do anything else is it set okay let's just go ahead and flip it over and we're going to do these four let's get them started Same thing, start kind of a circular pattern going. Firm but not hard. You don't want to risk cracking the composite material. After the last two pieces, take the clip and this one will line up here. It will pop in from the back with the long piece. Same here with the long piece in the back. Get started. And the front piece will click into place. Lift flush when it's done. Now our final two screws. You have to be careful with these particular ones because it's plastic, so they may not want to. You want to like just softly put them in. Just go until you feel it stop. Don't torque these ones down like you would with the rest of the frame. Okay, so that's done. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do as test our aircraft. All right, so we're gonna just make sure everything folds properly as it should. 
So here's our new leg, bolts down, out. Same with the other. So it seems to line up just fine. And there we go. Now let's go ahead and test the motor. So make sure to take your gimbal clamp off. Boot it up. And it's going to go through an IMU cal calibration, but I recommend doing full calibrations and everything, including compasses, especially compasses. So I'm going to go ahead and start it as soon as it's ready. Okay, now that it's ready, we'll go ahead and start it. Okay, so these should be going counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, and just do a quick test. You look for vibrations, bearings, and you'll know um, if it's performing correctly. So now, everything's working well, so we're going to go ahead and do a flight test, and we should have her back up in the air flying properly again. Thank you for watching, and then again this is Cody with Liquid Lab Studio, and give us some love, show us some kudos, and like and subscribe, share us with your friends, and just... Enjoy our videos. Thank you very much.